Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. This is Deb McBride, broadcasting from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica, where it has become summer, for the most part. Summer. The rainy season is coming to an end. And today is Sunday, November 29th in the year 2020. And it really is uh, the end of the year, (laughs) which is pretty unbelievable. Um, It is the end of the year. So we have one month left. And that month starts on Tuesday. And it is December 1st. And in the meantime, the big news is we are in the middle of an eclipse. So this is the first eclipse of this particular eclipse season. The eclipse occurs in the wee hours between today and tomorrow, Monday the 30th. Now, depending on where you live, of course, you might be able to see it or not. And uh, if I was awake in the middle of the night tonight, which I hope I'm not, um, (laughs) I should be able to see it because uh, North and South America are getting a view of it. But it occurs at 4.30 a.m. Eastern time. So that's 3.30 here. And, uh, you know, if you stay up late on the Pacific coast of the United States, you might be able to see it. Um, But in any event, it it occurs at eight degrees of Gemini. It's a full moon. It's a lunar eclipse. And this is the really the big event of the week. Um, And it ends November. Tomorrow's the 30th. So this is lunar, meaning the sun and the moon are in opposition. And the sun is at eight degrees of Sagittarius and the moon is at eight degrees of Gemini. And if you have anything in your chart that is at those degrees, then you are going to feel this probably more than everybody else. Um, So if you are particularly sensitive to full moons, meaning that maybe you were born on a full moon, um, then you are going to feel this as well. If you are a Gemini or a Sag or a Pisces or a Virgo, this is an eclipse in mutable signs, and it's definitely something where you are going to get a sense of, you know, the emotional impact of the eclipse. So it's important to pay attention as this is something uh you know we haven't had eclipses in a few months we don't have them very often although this seems like we just had them yesterday because they were there were three of them in uh, june and july and so here we are we are at eclipse and eclipse season officially opened with the new moon two weeks ago now eclipses since this is a full moon yes it's usually endings of things like we start something at a new moon we finish something at a full moon but this eclipse is a north node eclipse meaning the north node is in gemini and the south node is in sagittarius and so what's what's doing the eclipsing is the you know it's the moon that's getting eclipsed and so it's not a solar eclipse which is in two weeks that's a south node eclipse and it's closer to the node so that's far more powerful than this eclipse but that doesn't you know mean to disparage this eclipse at all we are having an eclipse and it's powerful and it's intense so emotions run high uh since it's in gemini it's ruled by mercury thoughts run high it is something where we feel like our mind might get a little out of control. We want to just be aware of our thoughts, be conscious of our thoughts, and be focused on just kind of keeping our emotions to a level at which they are positive and idea-oriented and epiphany-oriented. Um, Gemini is an air sign, as we've discussed, and it is ruled by Mercury, which right now is in Scorpio and will stay in Scorpio until Tuesday when it goes into Sagittarius. So this is something where, you know, thoughts may be intense and good. You know, maybe you should do something intense. Maybe you should have an intense meditation. Maybe you should have a powerful meditation. Maybe you should have, do some writing Um, Maybe you are working on something that is very wordy or verbal or something that you need to articulate like a speech or a presentation or a novel. Um, It is important to pay attention to 
how your thoughts are running. And if your thoughts are running a little negative, you want to clean that up. It's a good time to clear those things out. Now, when I say this is a North Node eclipse, this is about something we want to feel fulfilled about. Whereas the South Node is ending something. The North Node is where we might have a new beginning, a new start, something new, something um, that we initiate. And it's something fulfilling as opposed to the South Node where we are going to feel like we want to grab and hold on to something or something's being ripped away from us and we have to uh, kind of adjust to whatever that might be. But if this is, you know, um, in your chart in a positive way, then you should experience some positive, you know, events, one would hope. Uh, eclipses always bring emotions to the table. I have said this time and again, and that means that whatever's lurking under the sofa now comes out on the coffee table. <laughs> whatever's lurking under the earth in the garden comes out and greets you on the front lawn. Okay. So it's something that maybe need to be expressed or talked about or something. It's possible doesn't always mean that that's the case but if you are feeling that way then you should absolutely you know express where you feel the need to express and be coherently verbal because you know eclipses can make us a little loco i mean the word lunatic comes from the moon <laughs> and people get loony under full moons and this is certainly a possibility with the eclipse now just because it doesn't happen today or tomorrow, it doesn't mean it won't happen on Tuesday or Wednesday. Or maybe something happened yesterday. Um, it is an emotional high point. We do get a little wired. If you find yourself wired, uh, you know, just do things to, to calm yourself down. Do some yoga, do some meditation, do some deep breathing. You know, watch some, your favorite movie, something like that. In addition to this, we are still in the experience of Neptune going direct, which happened yesterday. And that was at 7.37 p.m. Eastern time. So if, you know, if you're feeling tired and you're like, wow, what is she talking about? Like the mind is, is bending and it's overexerting itself and it's busy and all. I'm exhausted. Yeah, that's Neptune. <laughs> so there's a lot of energy flying around. You know, eclipses can make us kind of wired um, and Neptune going direct will make us sleepy because it's Neptune slowing down. Neptune has slowed down to a crawl and it's turning around, but it's an outer planet. So it hangs out at one degree, you know, that it is at the 18 degree part of Pisces that it's at. It hangs out at that one degree for a little while before it really starts to move. And so we are sort of in this suspension now imagine being in water and just sort of being suspended you know that's what the eclipse um, might trigger it might feel like you are in suspension and all of a sudden this eclipse kind of comes along and wakes you up a bit but we have to navigate between this between the mental energy expended during the eclipse and the experience of Neptune going direct which is very emotional sensitive and might you might feel like you're in limbo so it's a good thing to kind of be aware of all of that they may cancel each other out in your life and you just feel like I'm having a normal day <laughs> but it's something where you must feel like you are um, sort of on top of things and control of things that you you don't lose your mind at this eclipse and you don't get infuriated by what um, someone says to you. It's words. Remember, it's Gemini. And you are compassionate and you have empathy and you are, um, you know, in your heart. That's the Neptune part. That's the Neptune in Pisces going direct yesterday. So, the most important thing is to be conscious and be self-aware and take this moment. And, you know, if you like to do a ritual for the full moon, do it. 
if you want to just write in your journal because it's very um, necessary to do something like that, uh, you feel that it's necessary, then do that because it is Gemini. Um, maybe you uh, started something new um, in these last few days, um, like verbally you started, you know, a new chapter of a novel you're writing, like I mentioned before. So, so something something is very um, pressing in the intellectual sense because it, it's an air sign, but it's also sensitive because we do have Neptune reminding us to be compassionate. Now, if you are uh, in heightened emotions over the eclipse and you're a little irritable and, you know, things in Gemini and Sag are triggering you and you want to start a fight, why do you want to start a fight? Who do you want to start a fight with and why? And where is the compassion? Because it's Neptune going direct. Where's the compassion and empathy for what's happening to the other person? Are they, you know, uh, a person who's troubled? Are they a person who's just going through something? Um, think about it. If you are in a mood to pick a fight or you're, if you're in the mood, if you start bickering, sort of come at it from the end of compassion and see where you, where you land. So that's, that's uh, a pretty important thing. You know, that it's not an accident when these things happen at the same time. Um, you know, Neptune going direct is, is where we, you know, after a few months, we find our compassion, we find our ability to move forward and, and flow with our emotions um, without getting uh, irritable. Now, um, eclipses come in pairs, and there is another eclipse in two weeks. It is, like I said, a solar eclipse, but it's at the south node. So that's more of a releasing of, um, of things. If you feel you are in a, a little bit of a funk from all of this, then go for a long walk, take care of yourself, take a nap. Um, I told people on Instagram today on my video that, you know, they should do things like take a hot bath or do something for themselves that, that could be, um, you know, a little Neptunian. If you need a nap, <laughs> we're, we're all exhausted. I said, we're all exhausted. I'm exhausted. Everyone's exhausted. So, you know, it's, and it's more than, you know, holidays and Black Friday weekend. Um, <laughs> anyway, the moon will be in Gemini. It went in yesterday at, um, no, actually today, 11, 16 a.m. Eastern time. It will be in Gemini all day tomorrow. It will go void at 11, 23 p.m. Eastern time. Its ruler Mercury will make a sextile to Saturn at 2.01 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. So remember the, the ruler of Gemini is Mercury. The eclipse is in Gemini. The eclipse will have happened about 10 hours prior or, you know, nine and a half hours prior. But it's still kind of hanging in the air. It's not like, oh, it's over. Okay. Um, it, and Mercury is sextiling Saturn. Now, that's a good thing because Saturn is stability and Mercury is very much, you know, it can be wild, but it's in Scorpio, so it's deep and penetrating. And the fact that it is making this smooth aspect, which is what a sextile is, a 60-degree aspect, to Saturn, means that we can be, become grounded easily. So I think it's a good thing Mercury is doing a nice thing with Saturn. It's not like, ooh, Mercury's fighting with something. It's not. It's, it's doing a good thing with Saturn, and it's in a place in the Zodiac which is deep and thoughtful and penetrative. And so... I think it's, I think it's positive for the eclipse. I think it's good because we don't, we don't feel like we're in a place of, of, uh, you know, irritability or anything, you know. The moon goes into, uh, cancer on Tuesday, <laughs> But here's the here's the crazy thing. It's uh, it's void eleven twenty three p.m. on Monday. Okay, eleven twenty three. It goes void. It doesn't go. That means it's still in the sign of Gemini, but it doesn't go into Cancer till ten thirty three p.m. on Tuesday, which means that is nearly a twenty four hour void. That's that's a twenty three hour void. The moon is void all day Tuesday. Okay, so p.m., not a.m., p.m., the moon is void. So it gives us a chance to take a nap after the eclipse. <laughs> it's, 
it's you know it's in Gemini um, and the last aspect it's going to make is squaring Neptune <laughs> the moon so this this can be a sleepy eclipse if you want it to be so and then the moon goes into its own sign of cancer 10 33 p.m. Tuesday it will be in cancer on Wednesday and Thursday and go void at 5 29 a.m. Friday in the sign of cancer that's all Eastern time. So it's a long time in Cancer this week. Most of the week it's in Cancer. And then it goes into Leo on Friday uh, at 7.53 a.m. Eastern time. Now, um, what's going to happen is the moon, after it makes this eclipse in Gemini, is then going to go into Cancer but oppose the Capricorn planets. And I've said this 10,000 times. So here we are once again where... The moon is in Cancer, and those planets are in Capricorn. And so starting on Thursday, Pluto's the first one, 7.21 p.m., the moon will oppose Pluto. Then it's going to oppose Jupiter at 1.52 a.m. And then the moon will oppose Saturn at 5.29 a.m. And that's the last aspect it makes before it, as it goes void. And so... It's opposing Saturn. Oof. And then, you know, so this is this is going to be another interesting week. Um, now, because I'm talking about this, remember what I said. Just because the eclipse is in the middle of the night tonight doesn't mean you get up tomorrow morning and have breakfast, you know, and you're like, oh, the eclipse is over, you know, unless you live someplace else and it's like Australia and the eclipse is happening in the middle of your day. Um, this is, you know, this could easily get triggered Friday, when uh, Thursday and Friday, when when it smacks into all those Capricorn planets and it's the opposition. This is a full moon. That is an opposition between the sun and the moon. When the moon goes opposite all these other planets, three planets on Thursday and Friday, and remember, it is going to affect Mars as well, 8.28 a.m. on Thursday, because Mars is still in Aries and will be for another month. Um, this is this is agitation and so the eclipse may have a delayed effect in your life be aware of this be a good bunny all week <laughs> try not to have arguments try to stay coherent and focused do your meditation do your journaling um, be kind to others have compassion remember Neptune just went direct have compassion find your compassion the compassion in your soul um, so yeah, so this is a, an interesting week. Mercury then moves out of intense Scorpio on Tuesday, the 1st of December, moves into the wildly fiery sign of Sagittarius at 2.52 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon Eastern time. So then it's going to be in Sag. So Mercury in Sag sometimes puts its foot in its mouth but it also can be very honest and and it can be you know mercury is sad it's going to eventually like come to that eight degree point in sad where the sun was and trigger the eclipse all over again uh-huh okay so um so mercury is you know the planet of communication and the planet of uh, discussion and articulation and so we are going to definitely have some experiences with mercury uh, this week as it moves into the sign where part of the eclipse took place so um, just be aware of your thoughts be aware of uh, what you're saying to people be aware of how you are interpreting things that's important um being aware where you, of how you interpret things because you know when you interpret something to be mm, uh, something that it's not remember neptune just went direct there's going to be some clarity and with an eclipse in gemini there there's going to be we would hope some truth comes forward and stuff so that is really 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 important um and we want to pay attention to that we want to pay attention to where the truth is coming forward and where the truth is coming out and and how we're experiencing our own truth Okay, so um, 
one of the things that we are also going to be uh, looking at is the fact that Venus, which is, um, you know, in Scorpio now, is going to be making a trine to Neptune. So Neptune's going to get a little dose of Venus on Saturday the 5th, and that's actually very pleasant. So um, Venus is you know, speaking sweetly to the higher octave of Venus, which is Neptune. And that's, so there's a lot of compassion in the air as we, as we experience these eclipses. Um, and when we do, you know, have this event, just, you know, sp speak your mind, but kindly with compassion. So I think, I think that's really the theme of this. Otherwise, Mars is starting to move. It's starting to move forward. It won't be, it's not a 15 anymore where it's been for weeks and weeks and weeks. It's at 16 Aries and it's going to really start to actually move again. And one of the things that we are uh, dealing with is the end of Saturn and Jupiter in the sign of Capricorn. And it's really important to pay attention to this because we are ending a big, big cycle. And Saturn is currently at 28 degrees of Capricorn. And that means it's got two degrees or a little less than two degrees to go before it enters the sign of Aquarius. Jupiter is behind Saturn at 25, uh, almost 26 degrees of Capricorn. And it's now moving away from Pluto where it's been conjunct three times. And Saturn and Jupiter in a few weeks are going to go into Aquarius. Now, Saturn's already made that visit earlier this year, but Jupiter has not. And this is the first time in 12 to 13 years that Jupiter is going into Aquarius. We are ending an era. And I, um, I receive, you know, one of the astrological newsletters I receive is from a website called astrodienst.com. They're um, European astrologers, and I've subscribed to their newsletter for a while. It's a very good website to get reports. And high-quality, well-educated academic astrologers write for their website and people who are very well-known in the astrological community, such as Liz Green. And so I got their newsletter this morning, and they always have a monthly newsletter where they uh, there's a section called the quality of time and the current quality of time and they are talking about the month of December and how we are really coming to the end of something very important we are we are starting a whole new cycle of of history of life as Saturn and Jupiter move into Aquarius and have that conjunction on the 21st of December, which is the winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. This is, you know, this is going to be, I'm going to be talking about this a lot because this is a major, major event. So in this, what I've called the unstoppable year of 2020, we are now moving into December and the, the aspects just don't stop. We are having that solar eclipse on the 14th. We are having... Um, uh, you know, the solstice is always, but we're having Jupiter and Saturn and Mars is going to come to Pluto. Remember, Mars came to all those planets in Capricorn for the first time. It squared them all in August. So we're ending a story on the 23rd of December. We're ending a story that started in August and Jupiter and Saturn are conjunct on the 21st. And this is something very powerful. Um, and I've said this before, and I will s tell you again, that this is what's known as the Great Conjunction. In all of astrology, this is called the Great Conjunction. And it only happens once every 20 years. And we're going to talk about this a lot because we're already starting to feel it. So as we come to a place where we are experiencing something profound in these next weeks watch for this you know it, i really feel the energy shifting profoundly this is this is something huge so they said for the first time in a few hundred years that eclipses uh, eclipses i'm sorry the saturn jupiter is occurring in um an air sign 
And one of the things that we are um, experiencing here is that this is the theme, the themes that we have experienced for many years of Saturn and Jupiter has been in Earth signs. And the conjunction's always been in earth signs. And now it's going into air. Air is about knowledge. It's, and especially Aquarius, it's about innovation and um, uh, sort of uh, utopian ideals. And you might not feel it immediately. You know, you're not going to, well, my life hasn't changed. It's December 22nd. No, this is a long standing experience. And you should look at the area of your chart where Aquarius is and what house that is. And if you have planets at zero or, or the early degrees of Aquarius and pay attention to that because that is about, um, you know, where this is, the, the story behind the Saturn Jupiter for you is in that house. And whatever you have experienced is coming to a new era. We're ending something major right now. And we are starting something brand new. And Aquarius loves newness. Aquarius loves change. Aquarius, even though it's fixed, it's like it wants its own kind of change. Innovation change. Changes that bring us a, a greater sense of knowledge because that water bearer is always like dispensing knowledge. This is where we start to talk about knowledge and ideas and, and innovations and, and um, where we start to experience a greater sense of mental capacity. Now, there are going to be people whose lives don't change. And these people want it that way. <laughs> I have seen people over the years, many people, whether they're my client or a friend or a distant relative, whose life really doesn't change. And maybe that's the nature of their chart. Maybe that's their lifetime. Maybe that's what they chose for this lifetime. But we are globally, collectively at the end of an era. Now, usually, and I've said this before on this podcast and elsewhere, um, usually we are at a point with the Saturn-Jupiter that something happens um, collectively that affects all of us, and it's the collective end of an era. So, you know, when we had the Saturn-Jupiter, or Jupiter-Saturn, in May of 2000. Um, that was the last time we had it 20 years ago, 20 and a half years ago, May of 2000. And when that happened, there were a bunch of planets in Taurus. It was all in Taurus, and it was at the end of Taurus. And that was, you know, right. So it wasn't exactly in that moment, that day or that month, but m several months prior, we lost John F. Kennedy Jr. So that was the changing over of 1999 to the year 2000. We were changing centuries. We were changing the dynamics that had been the 20th century and moving into the 21st century. And the Kennedy family in the United States were like royalty. And their era was over. You know, everybody wanted to see JFK Jr. become president. Not everybody, but people who liked them and loved them and watched them and read about them. They wanted they were hoping that he would run for president and like sort of restore some sort of faith lost when his father was assassinated and his uncle was assassinated. And that didn't happen. And Saturn and Jupiter usually indicate the death of an old monarchy. Um, it doesn't have to be a real king or queen. It could be somebody who represents that to your society. And, or it's usually a collective feeling. It's usually, it's often someone who's adored. Um, he's, he was someone, you know, I, I can't speak for the entire world, of course, but he was somebody who was generally very liked. He was not a bad guy. And, you know, I've never heard somebody, anybody say, oh, I hated that guy, you know, no. And, and then 20 years prior in 1980, there was the conjunction and John Lennon passed away and John Lennon had the Saturn Jupiter in his chart because he was born in 1940. And then in 1961, when they had, we had another conjunction, he had the beginnings of his very, very lucrative, successful career and life changing career. And that was a career that kind of changed all of our lives. You know, he, if, no one didn't know who he was, you know, and and so, and he was another person that you would say, no, I never heard anybody say, oh, I can't stand that guy. He was, it, he was universally mourned um, when he passed away, when he was killed. 
And that was 1980. So there's, and that was the end of sort of that, but it stamped them in history forever. And that is often what the Saturn Jupiter does. It stamps in history something forever. It's, and those people are often raised to some sort of hmm, archetypal story, you know? And we look at them and we say, okay, you know, they represented a certain era for us and they represented. A, a powerful time in our history and so there is the possibility that we lose someone and you know I'm not one that predicts people's deaths if you come to me for a session I'm not going to tell you that someone's going to die or you're going to die or when you're going to die I don't do that but this is the pattern of this chart now someone may resign and say I'm going into private life I'm resigning I'm, I'm pulling myself out of society and maybe that's the case. And so it's very possible that, you know, something like that happens. But we are at the end of something significant and at the beginning of something significant. And this pandemic has been part of that. And we all need to watch and listen. And, you know, Aquarius loves the outer limits. Like Pisces, it's the end of the zodiac. They love, they love the the unusual, the scientific, the, the deep probing, innovative experiences, epiphanies, shocks, con contrarian things. They love something that is exciting and brings something new to the table. So scientific discoveries, um, medicine, anything, technology, that's all very Aquarian. And Aquarius loves, you know, things all things psychedelic and interesting and and retro and happening like simultaneously in this time and space and another time and space and alternate universes so that's that's Aquarius Aquarius is we you know we're out there <laughs> so you know let's let's see how far out we can go Aquarius is a far out sign so this there's some far out things and unexpected things because you know, which will buy Uranus. And Uranus is the only planet that remains in retrograde right now. You know, all of the planets are direct. You know, Neptune just went direct. Uranus will go direct in January. And that's going to be another whole thing. But we're not there yet. So let's just focus on we're still it's still the end of November. and We still have an eclipse tonight. So. Um, getting us psyched up for this grand, great conjunction on the 21st of December. So we're going to talk more about that. In the meantime, I'm Deb McBride, and this is the Golden Astrologer Podcast. And I wish you a blessed eclipse, and I wish you an epiphany and a beautiful experience, and I wish you many divine blessings. Um, and I hope wherever you are, maybe you can see the eclipse, and it brings something wonderful into your life. And... I give sessions, astrological consultations, and if you would like to uh, hire me for that, <laughs> you are more than welcome to go to my website, thegoldenastrologer.com, click on book online, and you will see that um, you know, list of services. Um, my Instagram is thegoldenastrologer, and I put videos up on the Golden Astrologer Instagram. I have Twitter at Deb Astrology, and I'm here on this podcast every Sunday evening. And please, please, please um, write to me if you have questions, if you have comments. Um, I'm also on YouTube, YouTube at The Golden Astrologer, but a lot of those videos are ones I shoot for Instagram, but I do put other things up there. So be at peace, be pleasant, have a beautiful week, enjoy the eclipse, and all gratitude for you, all of you, for listening. Thank you.